from this, right? <laughs> and I had two this year. First, I had the French presidential election. I can't remember having a worse disagreement with my father than because of those elections. We couldn't disagree more about the candidates that we were rooting for. But the worst had yet to come. Who here had heated discussions about the Brazilian presidential election? Only me? Yeah. Ah. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. I have the best friends. We are a group of 15 adults and 10 children. We've known each other for decades, and we do everything together. Vacations, holidays, all the birthdays, we're together in bad times, like when someone needs support, everybody's there to help. And of course, we're together in good times. When someone enjoys a success, we celebrate. So a couple of months ago, our friends Kay and Jay invited us for a barbecue on November 5th to celebrate their moving to their new apartment. We were all very excited about that. We were going to have the best time. Then came the presidential election. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first round? Yeah. It was close. It was tense, <laughs> right? So after the first round on our WhatsApp group, everybody was sending messages like, hey, everybody has to vote in the second round. Nobody can, you know, not choose between Bolsonaro and Lula. I mean, they are so different. It's so important for the future of this country. You have to choose. Everybody has to vote in the second round. After a week of this constant messaging, our friend Kay sent the following message. Guys, I love you very much, but I cannot take this pressure anymore. So I am leaving the group. I don't want to hear about this until the second round. And after, if you want, you can add me back into the group. So, well, we respected her decision. Right? Friendship is more important than politics, but we kept sending messages and <laughs> giving ideas until the second round. And if you remember, the second round was somehow worse than the first round. So we kept sending messages even after the elections were over. And then came November 4th, the day before, so Kay's boyfriend, Jay, he sent us the following message. Guys, I count on you tomorrow. You have to come. Everything is ready. It's going to be fun. We'll see you tomorrow. And it was time to go. So I told my wife, honey, are you sure we should go? You know, I have a bad feeling. Because if anybody talks about the elections, <laughs> it's going to be a mess. I don't want anybody to be angry. It's not going to be nice, right? Remember, it was just a few days after the election. And my wife, she is the mastermind of friendship. So she answered me the following message. Don't be silly. <laughs> we said we will go, so we are going. And we will have fun, and you will not talk about the election. <laughs> so we went. Guess what happened? We had 
had the best time ever. It was awesome. We had fun. We laughed. We had great barbecue. We knew the new apartment of J and K, which was great. We shared their happiness. We even joked about the elections. Nobody was angry. And it all ended up with the 15 adults and the 10 children playing together on the football field. It was awesome. Do you have friends that you care about and that care about you? Do you have friends that you really love? If you do, it's the gift of your life. Okay? We don't choose our family. Our family, we cannot change. They are like they are. Our friends is the family that we choose. Okay? We have to enjoy that. So if you have friends like that, that you haven't been, seen or haven't spoken with for a while, reach out today. Send them a message. Call them. Hey, I love you. I miss you. How have you been doing? Let's see each other. Take a chance. You won't regret it. Thank you very much.